Good morning everybody and it's welcome to Friday morning. Um, this is, I'm calling this letting go of emotional pain, letting go Friday. Now, if you're feeling emotionally burned out and emotionally overwhelmed, then this video is for you. As many of you know, this week started with my birthday on Sunday and I continued with the celebrations on Celebrate Monday. And it's also my son's birthday, Bruce, that his birthday was yesterday. And I thought I needed to share and use my own tips, really. I needed to do that yesterday to find peace of mind. So I did my peaceful Wednesday video, which I hope helped people. However, as many of you know, when you lose a loved one, no matter what time of year, it's never easy. And emotions certainly ran high this week with me. So I felt I needed this topic, letting go of emotional pain. And I hope it helps everyone who is experiencing the pain of loss, no matter what that loss is. When I think of topics to chat about, I often come across phrases or poems or sayings that seem to be very apt for the topic. And this week was no exception. Now, <clears throat> we all grieve differently. But one phrase that I heard was, um, and applies to everyone, is you must grieve your loss, but don't live it. And that's, that's really quite important. Poems were also very apt and one in particular stood out for me and I'm not sure if I'll get through this without faltering, but here goes. It was called A Silent Tear. This is going to be difficult. I'm going to use my red door, blue door for this, I think. Just close your eyes and you will see all the memories that you have of me. Just sit and relax and you will find I'm really still there inside your mind. Don't cry for me now I'm gone, for I am, I am in the land of song. There is no pain, there is no fear. So dry away that silent tear. Don't think of me in the dark and cold, for here I am no longer old. I'm in that place that's filled with love, known to you all as up above. Now, the writer of that was unknown, but I thought that was really apt to manage to get through that. <clears throat> Just breathing and doing my red door, blue door exercise, which really is very helpful. And I th I've done a video on that before, but you can find lots of these tips and things in my in my books. This past year has taken its toll on everyone with deaths from COVID, but there are other forgotten uh, or nearly forgotten deaths, and that's from cancer and from, I'll give Barbara a wee wave, thank you Barbara for being there, um, the, from cancer, from strokes, there's increased suicides across the world <clears throat> and an increase in domestic abuse. Mental health issues are on the rise and that'll just continue to increase. So we must be prepared to live with what life has in store for us. I want to take a moment to think of our frontline workers, but not just the nurses and the doctors, from people from all areas of work who have been looking after us and who've had traumatic, difficult times. Now, they will or may not know, well, they won't know, we know none of us know what's ahead of us, uh, Because, but particularly them, they won't have had time to think about themselves, take care of themselves in the way that some of us can or should have been doing. They have to let go of their fears, do their jobs and keep us all well and safe. I must thank absolutely everybody, all my followers, for, for letting me know that my tips and my techniques, like my ABC and the Mind Bites meditations, help them in these times and help them to focus on positives as much as they can. I also know many are wanting to get back to normality, but what normality? It will be a different kind of normal, and if you are resilient, you'll be able to manage the challenges that life throws at you, no matter what they are. So for today, <clears throat> I say to everyone who's experiencing the pain of loss, who are grieving lost loved ones or elderly relatives who are suffering dementia, 
Alzheimer's, people with mental health issues who might be with you physically, but they've kind of lost, the, the, they, they don't know who you are. And it's tragic. It's really tragic on the people who are watching all this sort of um, unfold before them. So I hope that my tips were now on 128 videos. Um, so they're on the YouTube channel. So you can <clears throat> go back to them and look at my YouTube channel. Please subscribe. And you can, you know, look at any of them, all of them, and pick one that you think might be apt for you. And you'll be surprised that that might be the video you need to listen to. It's over a year now since we went into the first lockdown. And although hopes were raised with vaccines, we, we're still anxious. We're still um, overwhelmed. Many people still confused. Um, do we go out? Do we not go out? Um, how effective are the vaccines? Will it be with us forever? So many questions. And I don't really think we have all the answers. And sometimes I feel the lockdown this year, um, people have found it more difficult than last year. Perhaps last year was, um, it was like the first time, it was a novelty almost, and we found ways of dealing with not going out. But this time we're getting more and more frustrated, and there's a kind of desperation in the air. But we have to be patient. Life is ever-changing, we forget that, and we don't know what's round the corner. But you can have tips to hand that will be help you to be able to face and manage these changes and you'll manage them in a more positive constructive way this is how it is when you lose a loved one i know this and many of you know this that the pain of losing my eldest son um, to suicide is often unbearable and that it can hit you at any moment any time i just want him to s <laughs> going to get emotional now but i do i just want him to spring in the door um, chatting non-stop about his creative ideas, so excited, so vibrant. He just filled the air with energy, sometimes very high energy, and it was difficult to keep up with his racing mind. But I know I can't have him back. I remind myself, I keep reminding myself, he is at peace, and it would be selfish of me to to want to have him back if he was to be constantly in pain and mental anguish. So how do I let go of emotional pain? Well, first and foremost, I accept he is gone. But physically that is. He wouldn't want me to live in a life of misery, but I know that he's with me in heart and soul. And I know he would want me to live a uh, life to the best the best way I can and what he knew I was good at and that was sharing my techniques he helped me with these techniques it seems so sad that he maybe couldn't deep down use these techniques to take himself out of his mental anguish but he would want me and I know from his conversations with me share these mum get them out help everybody to feel good about themselves so the tips are, and I know that this is repetitious again, but because I repeat these and you think, oh, here she goes again, but they really are important. First of all, your achievement board. I focus on positive things as this keeps my energy up. I think about the things I want to achieve now, or, or that I have achieved because this is a difficult one for me because I think, again, we're going back to labelling and past conditioning. Nobody wants to talk about themselves. Don't be boasting about yourself. And I need my achievement board. It's to remind me of my successes. And no matter how small. Now, there's a tendency to think, we all think this, oh, successful people, their achievement board will be they've achieved massive goals, they've won the gold at the Olympics, they're the leader of a large organisation. This is far from the truth. Successful people are those who achieve even the smallest things they set out to do. <clears throat> for example, you might have difficulty in getting up in the morning and that's probably hit lots of us over this lockdown. So just taking that one step out of bed, that's an achievement. So if you've been overwhelmed and depressed, just take that one small step out of your bed. That's an achievement. And if you can't bear the thought of going out, maybe you think, no, I can't go out in the rain. Well, 
wrap up well and take a few steps out of the door, particularly nature. Feel the rain in your face. Feel the, the wind in your face. Just wrap up well. That's an achievement. So we're not talking about massive things. Uh, I wonder how many people actually think about this. Or how many people put the smallest things on their achievement board? I bet you don't. You're thinking of, oh, what can, what can I fill my achievement board with? What have I actually been successful at? And you might be, well, I got promotion at work or, or I did this for someone else. No, think of the small things. Put that a wee photo of a bed and somebody stepping out of it or just opening the door. These are achievements. And if you haven't added these small achievements to your board, you, you know, do it now because you'll be really surprised at how successful you have been. The next time you feel down, just take a look at your achievement board. The next thing that's difficult for lots of people is when you look at this board or you think about things you've achieved, praise yourself. Be proud of what you've achieved. And if it is that small step out of bed, that's an achievement. So praise yourself. And if you're finding that difficult, please private message me, email me, pat at mindcircles.co.uk and I will praise you and that will get the ball rolling. Because I think that uh, many people may be shy or maybe um, we think, oh no, I can't talk about myself. Well, I'll be happy to praise you and that will get the ball rolling. So start now. Your inspiration board, that's the next one. I want you to look at your inspiration board or your journal. Now, I've been talking about achievement boards, inspiration boards. You're probably, your walls are covered in these now. So maybe instead of that, obviously I'm going to recommend my own book, my Changing Seasons of Life, but you could use that every year, all year, because you can write down your achievements on the blank pages, your inspiration on the back blank, blank pages, your health wish list, all these things. So you've got that one place to hand and just have it beside your desk you know so really i hope you have taken to um this advice and i've given it in many of my live videos and if not please start your boards now your inspiration or your stick it notes anything at all writing things down also actualizes them it makes them real so i want you to write down your talents your abilities now, over the years, I've given many talks on this and so many people have said to me, no, I don't have any talents. No, I don't have. I don't have any ability to go far in my career. And when I dig deeper with them and have talks with them, do you know what happens? They've been told this often by not strangers, by actually people close to them, sometimes close family. Close family have said, oh, you wouldn't manage that. Why are you wanting to? You'll never achieve, you'll never amount to much. And phrases like, in our family, nobody needed to go to university. Why do you need to go? Or nobody needed to go for that promotion. We're quite happy just to jog along the way we are. That's not for you. Um, oh, it'll be too difficult. So, you know, you need to ditch these phrases. You'll be told us, just stick with what you know. Well, you know, people who say these things, the reason they say them isn't because they don't love you. If it's close family, they're actually frightened. They're frightened that you'll change and then you won't be the person they know. Now, you need to forget, this is their fear. You need to ditch that. Don't let their fear hold you back. So you need to forget these phrases. These are not your beliefs. They're beliefs of others. So you need to challenge these phrases. Forget what you've been told. You may, you may, you know, you may not, um, you maybe don't have, you haven't, maybe you think you won't make anything of yourselves. And of course, if you think that, then you'll be holding yourself back. So just question that. These labels, this past conditioning, you know, is that you? And most people will find it is not them. So you've got to believe in yourself. Let it go. Let these phrases go. Believe in yourself. Go get your goals and hold on to your dreams.
no matter what happens. Actualize, and I've said it before earlier today as well, write these things down. Write, please write down your talents, your abilities, your gifts, and then imagine sharing them with the world. Remind yourself, actually, in the first lockdown particularly, people were coming out the woodwork on a uh, social media, posting up. There's, I think there's TikTok now, but there's lots of things where they've been singing, they've been dancing, they've do, been doing paintwork, artwork, poetry. I mean, just much, much more. So they found talents and then shared them. And of course, another type of loss we mustn't forget, actually, um, I know there's loss of losing loved ones to death or dementia or Alzheimer's, but actually losses this time <clears throat> in their thousands, all the companies that have lost people, redundancies. Now, I taught, I taught or, or I gave talks to people returning to work and people who'd lost their jobs. And one of the things, hi Isabel, I'll just give a wee wave there. <clears throat> one of the things that happens is when you're, you know there's redundancies and you'll have perhaps been there yourself. I've been there. There's rumours, first of all, so that gets everybody fired up. And sometimes you'd, you'd rather just be told. But it's frightening, frightening for many. But I know from experience and speaking to the people who cope best, they saw the redundancy as an opportunity to change. They let go of fears. They let go of negativity. I'll give Lynn a wee wave. Lovely people on board. Thank you very much. This inspires and motivates me. So you need to take steps, of course. So you can't just say, well, well, you can. And, and we'll do the meditation later on letting go. But take steps that you need to take to achieve your goals and make your dreams and your vision a reality. Of course, it helps if you're confident. So if you join my Mind Circles community, you'll get a seven day confidence booster challenge and it's free. So if you start that, then that will build your confidence. And those who are already part of the community, I think you get that in my newsletter. If not, PM me and I'll, you know, I'll make sure you get it. Take this challenge and you can build and create the life you want. The next tip is get in touch with who you really are. Now, this is scary for lots of people because I'm not just talking about your talents and your abilities. You need to also be aware of what you don't like about yourself. And I mean, there's lots of things we don't like about ourselves and we want to push them to the back of our minds. We don't want to focus on it, but you need to know that you've got strengths, you've got weaknesses, there's things you don't like about yourself. Once you know the things you don't like about yourself, you can change them. But only you can do this. No one else can change you. And as I said, I think in previous videos, you can't change anyone else. There's so many things, isn't there, we don't like about others. Um, even little things. I think in lockdown, there was a joke, I think, on social media. <clears throat> but somebody actually posted it up. I can't stand it anymore. I can't stand it anymore. And her husband said to her, what? She said, you're breathing. <laughs> so there's little things we noticed, maybe more, but in the silence of the lockdown, maybe it was like almost like heavy breathing, but tiny things were getting to everybody. Well, don't blame other people. Look at what you're doing yourself and try and change yourself. But once you know what's what you don't like about yourself, set about changing it. Stay in touch with who you are at that deeper level. And when you do that, you'll not be swayed off the path that you want to create in life, in your career and your personal life. There are so many scary things out there in the world, but we all have scary aspects of ourselves that we don't like. We want to ignore them. Well, don't ignore them. You need to grow in personal development and you need to face these. So, how do you face these scary aspects of yourself? Well, you've got to develop a letting go strategy. And when you do this, then new positive aspects emerge. Most of the, the negative, scary aspects are embedded in things from the past. It's past attitudes, behaviours, opinions, because you've been told you're the lazy one. You're not as clever as your sister. Why are you doing this? You know, so you need to let go of these labels. And the next question is, well, how do I do that? Well, you need to move on. 
Now, I know this is difficult. When you've suffered emotional pain, past hurts from people, yes, it's difficult, but you can do it. You need to make a conscious decision, a conscious decision to let go and move forward. I mean, the pain of losing my son was just like no other. It was like a weight, as I say, the weight of emptiness. It's heavy, then it's light, then it's heavy again. I think I'm being dragged down. I think I'm drowning in the pain. And then the pain eases and then it surfaces again. You never know the minute. You can be in the supermarket. There's a tin of beans and it just brings up memories and you find yourself in bits. It's a roller coaster of emotions. And moving forward, of course, there's a tendency people might think, well, if I'm moving forward positively, that means I'm forgetting. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean you forget your loved ones. You never forget your loved ones. So the tips here on letting go of emotional pain. We will all experience the loss of um, a loved one at some time in our lives. And we've all maybe experienced um, a hurt as well. We will all have experienced that. And whether the pain is physical or emotional, those who cope better learn how to deal with the pain. And if you continue to feel that heavy emotional pain, if it's so much that it prevents you from healing from a situation, it's a sign that you're not moving forward in a healthy way. Your physical and mental health will suffer and to heal you need to learn from each situation and then focus on moving forward. So one of the things to do is stop thinking about the what ifs. Now I mentioned that earlier, what if I, my son I'd love him to spring in the door but I can't be doing this and just give a wee wave to Helen there too. So you need to stop thinking about the what ifs. If you continually think what if you'll be paralysed in painful feelings and memories and not be able to do anything? Now, this is where I use my ABC. They can and do help. I know this. I use them every day, every moment of every day. Um, if there's anything, anything kind of negative or pain hitting me, I just go straight into... Um, I mean, if I'm driving, I use my affirmation and my breathing. If I'm not driving or operating machinery, I use my ABC. I use the C as well, the creative imagination. I take myself somewhere positive. So the positive statement helps you turn the painful, negative self-talk. Because I think a lot of it is when you're constantly told something negative, it becomes your negative self-talk. So you turn it by using the affirmations into positive self-talk. If you're being hurt by someone else, this includes physical, emotional and psychological hurt. You need to distance yourself from them. Now that's easier said than done. I've talked about this in other live videos and I talk about them in my weekly or my regular podcasts. So you can go back and look at them as well. It's not easy, but you can be dragged down if you're living with this and uh, just recently, I've been talking to people where the relationship really is. Hi there, another Barbara there. Hi. Um, they're, they're dragged down so much. Now, this isn't physical um, hurt. It's emotional and psychological. Um, not, not worse than, but you can't see the emotional and physical pain. But th they've lost all confidence in themselves. And this is a talented, intelligent young lady so um it's amazing how people's words you know what's a sticker store what sticks or stains can oh i've I've lost it somebody will give me the phrase it's gone out of my head just now but please remove yourself from these kind of people if you can if you're living with it take yourself off to the little room and just sit for a minute or two and do my abc the next tip is be kind to yourself. This is not being selfish. Um, when you're experiencing emotional pain, stop beating yourself up. Stop criticising yourself. Show yourself kindness and compassion. And don't compare yourself to others. You can't avoid pain. Life involves pain. And losing loved ones is a, you know, we'll lose someone throughout our lives. But you've still got to treat yourself with love and care. I know that often when we lose someone 
and you do something nice for yourself, you, you've got that guilt and you think, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. But no, you need to be kind to yourself. But of course, remember, it's okay to be not okay. Uh, I mean, I know I'm talking today about letting things go, but remember, you should let your feelings, your negative emotions flow. Don't hold them in. Don't avoid them. Sometimes people shut them out um, or they try to shut them out, believing that the pain will go away. Now, I know, I think I talked about this before. I did go to um, a group. It wasn't for me, but it's there for everybody that um, some people found a solace in it. And I could see why there was one lady there. She'd lost her son. And I think it was about 15, 18 years ago. And the day she lost her son, her husband said to her, I don't want his name to be mentioned again. Now, that's just hurt so deep that she needed that group to, to talk about her son. And that's so sad. What what came to my mind was, I think I would have packed his bags and put him out, but that's maybe not the answer. But, you know, that was his way of dealing with it, not her way of dealing with it. And by doing that, when you shut it out or shut them out, the pain does not go away. That's wrong. When you avoid letting your emotions out, it impacts on your mental, your emotional and your psychological health and your overall well-being. You'll only leave yourself stuck and paralysed and you won't know what to do. And of course, if it's all too much, I definitely recommend you seek um, help from a mental health professional. That's, uh, that's a kind of given. But it, n most people are not perhaps in that situation. And that's where, you know, you can use my ABC techniques. The next tip is never wait for an apology from someone. Oh, someone who's hurt you. You probably, if, if only they would know to say they're sorry, a genuine, sincere apology. That from a lot of people who hurt others will never come and it just holds you back from living your life to the fullest and I experienced this from my son and if you've got my book The Weight of Emptiness you'll understand kind of the background to some of this he used to say to me all I want is an apology from my dad who'd not treated him or me particularly well put it mildly but it's all in my book there but I used to say to him, an apology will never come. They don't believe they've done anything wrong or doing anything wrong. And I said, the best thing you can do is to let it go and move on. Succeed. You know, when you succeed, there's nothing better. It's almost like a revenge. Despite all of it, you've succeeded. But sadly, he couldn't do this. And he often wondered how I was able to do it. But... For me, I used to say to him, if I constantly think of people who've hurt me or people who are negative towards me, I'm giving them energy. I'm giving them energy. I'm, I'm focusing on them rather than myself. So focus on yourself. When you do this and you let go, you start the healing process. And remember, forgiving is not forgetting. We never forget what people do to us. But forgiveness is vital to the healing process. It allows you to let go of anger, guilt, shame, sadness or any other feelings and you can move on. So don't get stuck and paralysed. And of course, self-care also means saying no. Now, I had this, I think, was it a week ago? We did the boundaries, setting boundaries. Go back and remind yourself of that video because setting boundaries is important. Um, do things that comfort you. Listen to your own needs. Many of us give emotional energy to others, even to our work. We've got big hearts, but just remember your heart has its limits. So me time is vital to rest and rejuvenate. Ditch the negative people, I've said it already today. Surround yourself with positive people, people who support you in what you want to do. Give yourself permission to talk about your feelings. Now, um, I know people around you might not want to hear you, hear about your pain or your hurt or constantly go on about it. I mean, many years ago when I did sort of um, lots of uh, 
uh, my work was to do with people getting divorced and some people would say you know they were losing friends and you know they didn't know what they were doing and I said do you constantly talk about your feelings and the divorce and things and they were well yes I said well people don't want they've got their own problems nobody wants to listen to you moaning all the time but I think when you've lost someone it is important that when you meet others don't get hurt by what they say. People, you know, all sorts of phrases like, well, you know, either good innings or, well, you know, this, that, and then it's all sorts of phrases. It's, it's, they don't know what to say. So what I do is I tend to um, put others at ease by saying, look, it's okay to talk about my son. I'm quite happy to do that. I point, point out, I make a point of openly talking about him. Um, or you can talk to a good friend, you know, who've lost a loved one. Share the good memories, not just the pain. And sharing is healing. He sharing is caring and helps healing. Of course, as these times are very challenging and still be and will be in this perhaps forever, it's just a different type of life we'll have. Stop watching the negative news. Um, you know, if you need to catch up once and obviously to credible sources. Before my Mind Bites meditation, I'm going to do the Letting Go one today, but I included in my eulogy at Bruce's Celebration of Life, and it summed him up, and it reminded me, and it does remind me, that he's with me always. And again, I hope I don't falter through this, but I'll use my red door, blue door, and my breathing. <clears throat> well, this was for my son. Your darkness... You are light. You are a thousand winds that blow. You are the diamonds in the snow. You are the sunshine in the rain. When I walk the dog, you are the swift uplifting rush of wind. You are the birds circling in flight. You are the soft silvery stars shining at night. I included this, this in my book, The Weight of Emptiness. Just got through that, just managed. <laughs> I'll have a good greet, as we say here in Glasgow, when I go off the video. But today I want to do my ABC. The A for affirmation is, I let go of negativity. I let go of my emotional pain. The B, breathing, your deep breathing, which, remember, calms, relaxes and energises. Now, the C to D, this is maybe a wee bit slightly longer, but I think it's really helpful if you've got any kind of emotional pain or hurt. And you can do this letting go exercise. It helps you let go of emotional pain. So we need to sit comfortably again, our backs straight. And I'm going to put this here behind my ear here. It's getting in the way. Now... You need to not a stiff back, but just straight so that you're feeling confident, but kind of confident, but relaxed. And I want you to close your eyes. Now I want you to hopefully sitting comfortably or you might want to lie down and do this exercise later. But close your eyes and just listen to my voice. Focus on my voice. Now I want you to choose something or someone that's hurting or has hurt you. Even if you're not sure who or what hurt you. It must be something over which you've no control. The only control you have is over your own feelings. The hurt and emotional pain will be felt somewhere in your mind and body. So I want you to take a moment to think of where you are hurting. Is it your head, your face, your neck, your heart, your legs? It can be anywhere. Hurt comes in any place, any time. Is it your shoulders, your neck? So just take a moment to think 
Where is that hurt sitting? I want you to give the hurt, the pain, a number from zero to ten. Zero is for no pain. Ten is for intense pain. Now take a deep breath in through the nose. Hold and then exhale slowly through the mouth. Now take another deep breath in through the nose. Hold and then exhale through the mouth. Now take a moment to feel your body, every part of your body, inside and out. Imagine you can touch every part of your body, inside and out. Now go to the place in your body or mind that hurts. Imagine you can touch that part of your body or mind. I want you to take a deep breath in, hold, and then exhale slowly through the mouth. Now I want you to take another deep breath in, but this time send positive thoughts and feelings to the part of your body that is hurting. It's like sending a hug to that part of the body. You're sending it love and positive thoughts and feelings. And I want you to say silently to yourself, I let the hurt go. I let the hurt go. Now breathe in again through the nose Hold and then exhale slowly through your mouth, still sending positive thoughts and feelings to the part of your body. It's like a smile to the part that hurts. This part of your body is now filled with love, surrounded by love. Now I want you to slowly open your eyes and silently saying in your head, I let it go, I let it go. Now I want you to think again of the number from zero to ten. What number are you thinking now of the place that hurt? Now, I do this exercise frequently. You can just relax now, yawn and stretch your arms. But if you do this exercise, I found the pain can be 10, sometimes even more than that. It feels more than that. But if I do this exercise and keep doing it, you might not get to the number 2 or 1 on the first time. First time, it should reduce to maybe six five or six but if you do it again the number will reduce but you have to just take a moment for yourself and do this exercise i have found i can get my pain to one or two it's a bearable type of pain because you're you're not you'll never we grieve forever you're never going to completely um get rid of all the pain or the hurts that we experience through life but this can bring you to it's a, a bearable a way you can bear it and move forward as positively as you can i hope that helps but please do it and of course private message me if you want to let me know um if there's some other way i can help two vital tips i always talk about them is smile and laugh they cost you nothing
So until Monday, have a fabulous day and a fabulous weekend. And thank you to everyone who's listening and talking and sending me much love. And I'm sending lots of love back to you. Remember to private message me with your achievements if you want, and I will respond. If you can't praise yourself, I will praise you and get the ball rolling. Let me know if you've got suggestions for a title. I don't have a title for Monday yet. Um, if I choose your title, then you get a confidential chat for an hour with me. What more could anyone want? <laughs> Finally, remember, please join my Mind Circles community and you will get this seven free, absolutely free, seven day confidence booster challenge. So as always, virtual, virtual hugs to everybody and we'll see you on Monday.